Yeah, we can start. Okay. Yep. So, any questions before we start? Yeah, I tried to execute few programs, uh, but in our database, I don't have the D DBMS output. I'm not getting the dialog box. No, that will be there. I'm are, just getting. Are you using on, SQL Developer or which one? I'm using SQL Developer. Did you click on this view DBMS output? Uh, no, I didn't click. I told na. Okay. By default, this will not be. Uh, I, I missed that part. Oh. Okay. And the program says it's it is successfully run, mm -hmm. but I'm not able to see the output. Yeah, you have to enable this one and you need to enable the connection. You have to click on plus symbol. You need to mention the connection in which you are executing that particular program and then this will get enabled. Okay, fine. Yeah. I just uh, forgot the part of it. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, fine. And I went through uh, the first PPT which you given me. Mm -hmm. uh, variables. Okay. Declaring variables and yeah, I mean, it's like almost all the topics you covered. Right, class. right. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's, mm. it's good. Yeah. And uh, I think the set, uh, the control structures, I don't think we covered that. For loops, so, if condition we covered, right? That is what control structure is. Oh, okay, okay. Fine. Yeah. For loop control structures, cursors, the uh, those are the things we covered up. Uh, uh, yeah. The fifth one is uh, composite data types. I mean, I don't yeah, know. that will wait, wait, wait for some time. That will consume. Okay, fine. Yeah, that will take some time to understand. So, see, your concentration should be mostly on the first one, declaring variable structure, and then like uh, loops, if condition, and cursor. Okay. These things should be perfect. And later on, remaining okay. things, it's very easy. Remaining things are just again, you'll come up. Everything, everything will be easy. These things you have to be perfect. Then you know we can easily understand the composite. Composite data type generally takes time to understand. Until okay. until, and, until unless until unless you have some a programmatical hands-on on this one, you'll not understand composite. So okay. it just one or two days, right? So if you have I mean a good hands-on on this one, then it will be easy to understand composite. So Yes, yes. It, won't, get it won't be tough. I don't say it is too tough. It just takes some time. That's it. Maybe it needs a little bit of practice on the yeah. basics. The right, basics. right. So that's what. See, like yes. uh, one more thing is we always need to we need to have a good knowledge on the basics. Other uh, advanced yeah. topics very easy to learn. It only thing is until unless we are clear on the basics, it becomes very difficult to understand the complex topics. Yes, yes, yes. That's the only thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so good. now, as of now, if you observe, we have been working only on the anonymous block, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll tell you. See why? Like what? Why? One more thing is like uh, during design stage. Like uh, you know, generally for Oracle ERP projects, we always follow HDLC lifecycle, right? Okay. So up and down. Yeah. So like nothing but like waterfall method. We just follow one by one. You'll just start yes, the. Sir. You'll just start design, build, production, and maintenance, right? So this is general yeah. philosophy of the Oracle ERP implementation cycles. But these days. Yes. Maybe if you're aware, like uh, if you yeah, agile, like, going, yeah right, agile, agile is becoming a common agile, or maybe hybrid agile is becoming common. Okay. Yeah, and Oracle has its own methodology, right? OUM. Yeah. yeah. See, like uh, that is mostly for the documentation methodology. Even you see for Oracle ERP project, for Oracle eBusiness suite, we have this uh, like uh, we have one methodology, and for Oracle. Yeah, latest version is OEM. What you said is latest version is OEM, and generally oh, okay, projects yeah. they follow AM, right? Application implementation methodology, and OEM yes. is OEM is advanced version of AM. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but that is more of a documentation standard. But execution standard okay. you will follow either waterfall waterfall methodology in the e-business. So mostly uh, yeah. Oracle will follow waterfall. In See, there are two two things you have to understand here like now. In the e-business suit version, mostly they follow waterfall method. Okay, fine. But in the Oracle, they're following waterfall. Yeah, in the Oracle ERP cloud, it is always either hybrid agile or maybe agile. Not pure agile. Okay. Mostly it will be always uh, hybrid agile. Okay. It won't be pure. So pure hybrid agile, agile is it, uh, like what all it's a hybrid of what? No, it's a combination of your agile and waterfall. That's how it is. Okay, the waterfall and agile. Yeah, that's why it is hybrid. 
see at the end of the day same concept only thing is the way you iterate it the way you get the requirement that is only differs Re- remaining is again yeah, same, yeah, same yeah. as it is yeah so it's only thing waiting period methodology, uh, correct me if i'm wrong hmm. uh, it goes to prod as soon as the components components tested it goes to prod in the waterfall they have releases like for every two right. weeks they, they release so even though the the component is tested and it's ready for prod they won't push it to prod yeah right so and you have a concept you know like you have a scrum master you have something called sprint that you have some naming that convention will be in yeah. Agile, right yeah of course in the hybrid agile also you'll have the same terminology right yeah yeah um, you know the agile comes the yeah right um, yeah. yeah right so, so the sprint will be the sprint is common for waterfall and hybrid agile and agile right I mean, in the waterfall, the sprint concept is not there, right? In the waterfall, oh, sprint, right. sprint itself is not. I mean, we don't even call it a sprint. Nothing, right? It's just a task and kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one one more last question about this methodology mm-hmm. and the Scrum Master. What is his role in the project, Scrum Master? See, ideally, Scrum Master is nothing but your project manager. So, Scrum Master okay, will come right. into come into role if something is not happening, or if you know, okay. like, uh, let us say you, you, there are multiple developers and there is no progress happening, and then Scrum Master okay. will come into picture and he will sort out the issues. So, usually, they will be specifically assigned for the only that task, or. No, like it's, see, Scrum Master is equivalent to manager, but generally Scrum oh. Master will be a way, Scrum Master should be an independent one, but generally in the real time that won't happen because they can't ass- okay. they can't assign two managers, right? So yes, yes, yes. yeah, that's the reason. Well, most of the times, manager itself manager itself will become a, itself will play a role of Scrum Master. Okay. Mm. Oh, fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, go on with the technical stuff. Yeah. See now, like, uh, un- yeah, I was telling why anonymous block because see, generally, like, when you get a requirement, initially, what we do is we don't try to create a procedure or a function because sometimes we okay. need to do POC or sometimes you just need to understand how it is working because because there is no guarantee that which module we will be working on. As a technical developer, today we'll be working on financial. Tomorrow it can be SCM or it can be HRMS. So okay. we don't we don't rely on the modules first of all. So that's the reason. What happens is when you get a requirement. If you are aware, if you working on a new module or something, if you want to validate some logic, what we prefer to do is we don't try to create a procedure at the first stage itself. We always prefer to execute it using anonymous block. That's the reason anonymous block okay. is used. In real time, anonymous block is for client purpose it is not required. For developer purpose, anonymous block is required. Why? Because to okay. test to test some samples or to practice something. Let us say you are cry- you are working on a new module and you have an API. Okay. And that, you need to invoke that API. So until unless you know that we we don't prefer to create a procedure, right? We don't prefer to create a procedure or function initially itself because it is of no yeah. use. So that's the reason anonymous block is used at most again during the design stage, during the initial design build build stage. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now so once, we, yeah. once the code is good and ready to go, then they'll go for the procedure and stuff. Yeah, of course that is required because without procedure okay. you cannot without procedure. Like that cannot be if you don't create a procedure you cannot call your business logic from other system, right? Because let us say for a given report. I want to call a particular API until unless I have a procedure. I cannot call it Okay, fine because in most so of the call the business logic Yeah from the other systems you need procedure, right? Yeah, not only other system within the Oracle system also if let us say okay. you you are building a report and that report requires a very complex logic what we do is we prefer to create a procedure we could prefer to we prefer to create a package procedure and write all the business logic inside that and we'll be calling that particular logic inside our report okay fine yeah okay one thing so so if you're running if you want to create a report so it pulls Business logic from various uh, various files, uh, various queries, and then generate the report. Yeah, of course, yes. Okay, fine. Yeah, you so, see, like when you're running a report, again, it depends upon lot number of scenarios. Let us say if your report is very easy, very simple query is enough. But if your report is so complex, what we prefer to do is we'll be design the logic, the the way we design the report, the way we you know populate the data, the way we write a query that will be different. Okay. Yeah. 
it all depends upon the complexity of the report then based on that the design will be there okay yeah so every time we may not follow the same you know like same solution it all depends upon yeah, the yeah, table yeah. which requirement and based on that you will be having a different way of implementing the report mm, okay. okay yeah so now let's start with the procedure okay so first of all we have to understand what is the difference between procedure function and package package so easier to easier way to understand so generally like most of the times you may call it as when you say procedure so i'll tell you the purpose i mean even in the slide for in the presentations also you'll find the total theoretical information but so why we use procedure and what is the difference between procedure and function we have to understand first okay let me tell you okay. yeah see procedure and a function both are pl sql you know like uh, stored programs both are pl sql stored programs okay okay fine so why they are called stored program because when you write a procedure or a function that will get saved in the database <clears throat> it okay. gets this is the, difference, the main difference between anonymous block and procedure and function right so we require it the data the query whatever it is it will be stored in the database yes yes the query will be saved or the total yeah, program the total program the whatever total program. Right? yes yeah. i get it, I get it. yeah so this is the thing so both are stored programs and both require a ddl command to be executed and both are get stored in the all underscore all underscore source table if you create any processor or function you can see the source code in the table called all underscore source okay because let us say you created some processor and mm -hmm. uh, you know like um, last time we have seen right when you are when you're trying to find out the package from here it was taking much time or let us say you deployed your procedure and you want to know whether it is there or not whether what is the latest code available in that so there are different okay. ways of finding out your procedure there are different ways of getting the source code let us say last time i think yeah this was a procedure right now i want to get the source code so there are many ways of getting the source code see here I can just mention name is equal to this one. That's it. Okay. Right. So instead of going to the the yeah. drill down buttons, you can yeah. just yeah. use a query and find out. Yeah. Okay. This is this is my code. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is how it will get stored in the runtime. Okay. Yeah. And other difference is no return value for this one. It has to return value. Okay. okay. And the per like uh, why? What do you mean by return value? Is simple example. I'll tell you. See. What is output of this query? Line number three. Uh. System that uh, from from dual is the void thing, so generally it gives the whatever the system date is. This will print year, current year. Yeah, yeah. I get. Uh, I mean. Okay, I'll yeah. tell. I'll tell you one more thing here. See, if that is the case, let us say. What will this print? Will this work? Uh, self system date. Uh, I don't think it will work. It worked in line number three, right? Line number three query it worked, but line number five, why it will not work? Two, sorry, two cares is there because it doesn't have like it doesn't have six date column in the mm -hmm. GL ledgers. But do you think that system six date column is there in the dual table? Dual is a table, you know that. Dual. Uh, dual is a, uh, dual is a table. Uh, I mean, my mm -hmm. I, what was what was I thinking is that dual is a void thing. So whenever you with you dual, it's like no nothing. You're asking dual is a table. Oh, dual is a table. in that you can see this. You can see. This dual is a table with one column. Can you see the column name is dummy, and the type is variable. Okay. Or you can see other way. Let us say if you try to execute a select star from table name. I just mentioned I just mentioned star right how many okay. how many records I'll get it line number seven I'll get only one row with one column and the value is X okay 
okay okay so gl is a table the way your gl ledger is there so even gl is also one of the table okay but significance is a little bit different if you see line number 3 i was getting only one row right okay and the same query but i just main change the table name right line number 9 okay so this is again it will print the output but only thing is your output will get repeated based on the number of lines available in your gl ledgers that's only difference so from where will it fetch the uh, 2017 what is this date first of all this date is a function it's a system date this date this date is one of the global variable you can call it as it's a global variable or a function which will return mm -hmm. the current date so i'm calling okay. a function this is my this is a function right this function is independent okay. of any table this is a function which is independent of any table okay yeah so but why do you require a table when you want to execute a function the thing is that's how oracle is designed if you want to execute a function you are you always require a sql query without having sql query you cannot execute a function Okay, fine. Uh, so it, yeah. it's giving like two thousand seventeen all the all the records, right? Here. Yes. 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 Correct. So is it the? I mean, how will it fetch that two thousand seventeen? How how is it getting? This date is a one, right? This date is a function which will return your year. This date is a function which will return your data. This date. What does this date returns? It returns date, time, year, and everything, right? Date and time, both. now yeah. in the output i am using a 2 underscore char which will convert your system date into a particular format i want to retrieve only year so this 200 oh, okay. so if i write this date directly it will return total thing for me right that's the difference right okay now it is returning 12 august something like this here i use 2 underscore char i just want only four characters i just want only year i don't want to retrieve any other thing i just want to print only year so this two a uh, two cat system that one system is a function is that you are trying to say earlier about two underscore care better okay do you so, know sys date is one of the global variable you can call it as as of now sys date is one okay. of the global variable it is there okay clear on Fine. this part yeah i am clear so now what i am saying is now if you write the sys date sys date from real it will return only one row What is the reason? That is what my question is. Line number nine, oh. it written two thirty two rows. Because it has only one record X. It has only X yes. one. Yes. And the GL ledgers have many records. Yeah. So now, how about this one? Will it work? Uh, Sir, two plus ten from GL. Ah, uh, I don't think it will work. Why? Uh, because it doesn't point in any way. Because two plus ten, it's not a mm -hmm. uh, what do you call that? Not about, a column, or it's not anything. How about this one? Select two plus ten from GL ledger. Ah, uh, even this doesn't give anything. Yes, it, it might give rows, maybe. Both will work. Oh, both will work. Okay. Oh, okay. So if you have seen this, why I am telling this one because if you have seen the select that particular PPT, so what? What is the syntax of select statement? Select followed by column or expression. This is what I mean to say. Expression, right? A mathematical expression. Any okay. Function, any function. Okay. That is what it means. So in the select clause, you can have a column name, you can have a expression, or you can also have a function. and followed by from clause in the from clause you can have a table name or a view name and okay. where clause this is for the purpose of filtering rows you have you should have a valid condition to fill yeah. the group by is for the purpose of grouping the data and then having is to filter the group data and order is for okay. the purpose of ordering data mm -hmm. so this is a th these six commands you have to have a very much good knowledge okay yeah so in the select expression you can mention a column name you can mention an expression you can mention a function okay so now until unless you mention let us column say if you say let us say now i'm getting one row right so if i mention where condition where one is equal to zero will it work no it, it doesn't work why 
will it give an error right uh, uh, yeah, one is equal to zero is one is equal to zero true or false it's false it's a false statement right so your where condition yeah. is getting false your where condition is returning false so no, you'll not get any rows simple okay. let us say if i mention where one is equal to one it's a true condition i'll get okay. all the data i'll get all the data okay so here one is a column number one is a numeric value it's not a column number it's a numeric just, value just right? a numeric value okay. let us say instead of one i can write 21 it will work still okay isn't it let okay. us say i'll write 1021 everything will work right i'm just mentioning okay. a condition here okay fine yeah. uh, good so where condition is a purpose of filtering the data you can in the where yeah. condition also you can mention fun again expression that's what i'm trying to tell you okay. you can mention oh. expression here so sys date is function right sys date i can call it as you know like instead of function you can call it as a global variable okay global. yeah yeah Okay, so where are we first of all? Yeah, so yeah, why I'm telling this one because a function always return a, a function always has to return a value and and you cannot invoke a processor in a select statement. Okay. It cannot be called in select statement. Mm -hmm. You cannot invoke a processor in a select statement. So whenever whenever you are invoking something in a select statement, it's a function. Okay. Okay, that's another difference. Okay. So these are the few differences between procedure and a function. And generally, like we use procedure for the purpose of business logic implement or DML operation, and we prefer to use this for the purpose of computation purpose or calculation purpose. Okay. These are the major difference between procedure and a function. Technically, okay. technically, let us say if if we return something in the function, the same thing can be written in the procedure also. it is not that you know like uh, something cannot be achieved in the procedure but can be achieved in the function it's not like that everything okay. can be achieved between both of them the only thing is how do you how do you want to invoke that is where the difference is so and okay. finally, if you want it in select or without if you want to invoke something in a something in a function that has to be in a function only sorry if if you want to if you want to invoke something in a select query you have to write the logic okay. in the function If you write if you write the logic in the processor that cannot be invoked in the function. Okay, fine. Okay, so that's the difference between procedure and a function. And one more thing is like you can invoke a procedure inside a procedure. You can invoke a procedure from another procedure, or okay. you can invoke a function inside a procedure also. The vice versa is also possible. Okay. You can have a function inside a function. You can have a you can have a function with having procedure inside it also. Yeah. Okay. Both is possible. Both are possible. Okay. Otherwise, I mean, they both look. They, yeah. they both, from what you're saying, they both look pretty much the same. But both are same. That's what I'm saying. Both are same. The only difference is it will not have written value. This will have written value. and we prefer to use procedure for the purpose of dml operation we prefer to use function for the purpose of computation purpose in some scenarios what i'm saying is will also be invalid in some scenarios okay yeah okay got it or yeah i got it i got it and coming to package package is see when you say package right it's a packaging it's a packaging component okay for procedure or a function mm -hmm. that's only the purpose of package component okay it's a it's a i can say it's a logical packaging unit or a packaging unit for procedure or a function let us say if you are writing if you want to design a report which require complex logic and you will be dividing your code into five processors what we prefer to do is rather than creating five processors independently we prefer to create a package and keep all the processor inside it that's only so we will bundle all the procedures into one package and yeah yeah so so um, yeah here this in my office they say uh, calling a package or something 
what is it like yeah we'll see that like until unless we know procedure and function we cannot discuss okay. much on the package first of all we have to have a clarity on the procedure and the function then okay. it is very easy to understand package technically package is nothing technically package is just a building block and we just bundle all the procedure function inside it okay. so in one package there can be procedure and as well as function at the same time yes a package can okay. a package can have n number of procedure or it can have n number of functions or it can have n number of both okay i can have a package with 10 functions 10 processor i can have a package with one processor i can have a one pa- i can have a package with one processor one function there is no limit for okay. these kind of things okay okay and package generally will have two parts one is called specification and another one is called package body okay we'll discuss this sometime later not now it is yeah, sure, sure. it's not required to discuss now until unless we clear on the procedure and function we should not discuss this yeah yeah so now let us create one procedure so now let us say we want to we want to you know like um, uh, maybe assume that we want to get the purchase order de- details based on a particular purchase order header id okay? okay we want to get the purchase order details of a given purchase order so i'll just pass one header id and i want to get the output po header all is my table now what i want to do is if i pass purchase order header id i need to read i need to get my purchase order number that's the requirement okay, okay. so we'll try to create both the logics i mean this logic from both the procedure and a function and let's see which one which one we have to use okay okay now let us say how do we create a procedure create or replace procedure don't try to use replace directly because you should not replace any of your existing source code but what we okay. can do is let us say generally in the real time let us assume that in your client environment i don't think you'll have any any particular program starting with xx sw right oh, yeah. it will not start or you can what you can do is before creating any component what you can do is always select start from all all underscore objects and here you can mention your object name now let us say i want to create a procedure with a name xxs get po details this my procedure name okay. i want to create now i can find out whether this particular program is already available or not i don't see any program with this name yes sir that's it so i can create it okay i'm not disturbing any other existing source code okay create a replace procedure and what is the parameter p underscore po header id and number right is Okay. Again, and okay. okay. Now, what are we getting? Input as PO header ID and output as PO number. PO number yeah. is a varchar. Now, like there are different ways of writing. Either you can write implicit cursor or explicit cursor. Why do you require a cursor? Because data it's data is available in the SQL query. So to yeah. write, to get that fetch to fetch the data, I have to I require a cursor. Without that, I cannot get it because PL SQL on its own doesn't have any capability to get the data from the database. Only SQL is having oh. capability. So that's okay. the reason. What I have to do? Select segment one from segment one into L underscore P one underscore number from mm-hmm. P one header all where okay. P one underscore header ID is equal to P underscore P U header ID. Okay. Now DBMS underscore output dot P U number is equal to. Okay. That's it. Right. It got created. Now, but how do you run it? That's a difference. Okay. So now what we have okay. to do is. so we just compile now see if when like when we ran our anonymous blog we used to get the output also it used to say yeah, 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 yes. but here you will not get it this is a difference that the difference okay. is say for anonymous blog compilation and execution will happen at a single time compilation plus execution will happen but for our processor when you perform compilation it is only 
initially like once you create a program it will just perform a compilation for execution we have to call it again for execution okay. you have to call it explicitly again it will not okay. it will not give output directly you have to execute it until unless you execute it it will not work okay okay so now i just compile this logic is this particular source code is available here now we can see that if you try to execute the same statement it has to it has to give one one record this is my object id okay okay so whenever you create a procedure if it worked successfully i mean to say like it, it got compiled successfully then all the information will get stored in the all underscore table all underscore objects table okay now there are different ways of executing procedure so now one way of executing procedure is make a note of your procedure name you can just mention ex mm -hmm. ec command followed by your procedure name that's it okay and the semicolon now select your statement and click on this run button okay yeah so it gives some error let's see yeah sorry we have to pass the pu header id right you have to pass the header id okay this is my pu header id so generally like uh, what i can do is here to have a clarity we can mention parameter name like this and then arrow symbol like this Okay. okay this arrow symbol this parameter name is not required okay you can mention the value directly also yeah it, it's now what it is saying anonymous block completed and now okay. it the output you remember so uh one thing yeah so it says po header id greater than not greater than the arrow output. symbol you are assigning it it's not greater than it's not that oh, you are logical yeah, okay. yeah you can remove oh, this okay. Yeah, I got confused. Yeah, so either way, either you, see generally like why am this I why I mention this is because let us say if you are designing a program and you if you have large number of parameters, you will have a confusion, right? Which particular parameter is referring to which value? Yeah. So what we prefer to do is we prefer to mention the parameter name and then this arrow symbol is for the purpose of assignment. You are assigning a value okay. to this argument. Okay. Yeah. So both line number thirty one, thirty three, both are same. Will both will give same result. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Now, so it, yeah. it gives only one output, right? It is not giving any one. output. It is printing an output. It is printing the output. That's the difference. Giving output is different. Printing output is different. Okay. That is a clarity. That is yes. That is a clarity required now. Okay. Yeah. So, what is the difference between printing and giving? See, now the thing is, can you invoke this particular program in your select query? You cannot. You cannot call it, right? Yeah. It can perform business logic, but written, it cannot return any value at all. It cannot return any okay. value. It can print it. That's it. It cannot return it. Okay. So now, why I'm telling about this one? Because I'll just see everything. I'll just copy paste again. See here. I'll copy the same logic, okay, and see what is the difference I'll write now. Okay, what I will do is I'll just change this name underscore f, okay, and here instead of procedure I'll make make it as function, okay. Okay. And other difference is I'll change this name also, and one more change what I will do is I'll mention return statement. I'll mention return statement followed by data type. Which data type I want to return it? Okay. Okay. Now. Okay. Now one more change. What I will do is I will I will write like this. Return like this. Okay. Okay. Now just perform compile. Function compiled. Okay. Now what I will do? How do you invoke it? Again the same thing. For procedure compilation is different, execution is different. For this one also same thing. So first step is compilation, because when you perform compilation, program will get stored in database. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Once program gets stored in database, you can call, you can execute it. Okay. So how do we execute it? There are different ways again. So the one of the ways what I can do is I can simply mention select. my function name i can pass my parameter value that's it is it written 500 yeah 
it's giving five. Yeah, that's a difference. Uh, one thing through the this finally is, uh, um, I mean, the, <laughs> sorry, yeah, I mean, there's too much to learn today. <laughs> I'm getting that. Mm-hmm. It's one one second. Slow. This finally is, is it the P1 value or is it the number? Of it's a P1. It's a P1 number, right? What what logic we wrote in, inside the function? Inside the function, what I wrote? Yeah. What is the logic we wrote? Just take the input as a P1 header ID and return the P1 number. See, like, uh, don't don't get in, don't try to understand wholly. Okay, try to understand the requirement. I'm not talking about syntax. Don't t- talk about. Don't work. Worry about the syntax. If you worry about the syntax, you'll not. Okay. You'll you'll lose the gist. That's what. Yeah, yeah. I will mean, tell you one other I'm thing. I'll tell you. Learn, I'll tell you one, syntax. No, no, no. I'll tell I you one know. example. Let us say if you're eating a food, if your concentration is on how it is prepared, that is gone. This is gone. You need oh, okay. to, you okay. need to taste the food first of all, digest it, then work up, then think about how it is done. Okay. I I that's the reason I was telling you don't concentrate on syntax first. Just understand the requirement. Please. What is the input? What is the output? That's it. Don't worry about the syntax now. It's okay. Waste. Fine. It's waste. So now okay. what, I, what I'm trying to tell you is see now the difference is now when I created a procedure, one basic thing is like as per the point which I mentioned here. When you create a procedure, a procedure cannot be invoked in the select query. Okay. But when I've written yes. a function, see both are written. See, business logic wise, if you observe, I've written everything the same. The only thing is for function, I have written a keyword called written. Why? Because a function always has to provide an output. A function always has to provide an output. But for the procedure, procedure cannot mm-hmm. return procedure cannot return any output. Okay. Mm-hmm. So like if at all, if you want to call some business logic in using a select query, then you have to write a function. And if you just want to perform some business logic, then you have to write processor. That's the difference. Now, in my case, line number 35, I want to see the requirement is, let us say, if you want to retrieve some value, assume that like a let us say from third party program, they say that like they will pass you the, they'll pass you the P word ID and they, in written value, they want, they want the P1 number. What will you do? Will you create a processor or a function? Uh, can you can you repeat the question? Let us say from third party system, they say that they will pass you the PO, name, PO header ID and they want to retrieve the P1 number. Okay. So, I mean, it can be done in both ways, right? Yeah, see, both ways, both, both ways it can be done. One more reason is, let us say, assume that, so like, let us say you are designing a PO report. Simple. You are designing a PO report. Okay. Now in the report, like let us say for for you know like uh, for this report to work, assume that you already wrote a select query. Already there are ten mm-hmm. there are ten columns in that. Okay, ten columns are there. In that mm-hmm. there is a column eleventh column which is which needs to print P1 number, but you just have only P1 header ID mm-hmm. with you. You don't have P1 number, and you don't want to join mm-hmm. that P1 table. You don't want to join P1 table get to get the P1 number because that involves a lot number of complex logic, and you don't want to write that logic in the select query. So what I prefer to do is, what I prefer to do is, I'll create a function, mm-hmm. and I'll play. I'll just mention my function name here. I'll just mention my function name, and mm-hmm. PO header ID here. That's it. It will give my PO number. Okay. Here itself, I'll show you. See, now let us say. What I will do is, let us say I am writing my PO header ID. Mm-hmm. Don't assume, don't consider this as PO table, okay? Assume this is another table which is having PO header ID, okay? Now, okay. I want to get my PO number. What I will do is see here. I'll pass PO header ID to this function here. I can get my PO number. Got it? Oh. Okay. And you can validate whether it is working fine or not, also. See, both, both should be same. Right, segment one is my P1 number, original P1 number, and this P1 number which I retrieved from the function using function. Okay, uh, just one, uh, still, yeah, oh, segment one, okay, yeah. So, one thing you replace from the query, and the, the other thing is from the function, right? Y- yes, yes, that's what, yes. One is from the exact this PO table, PO header ID, and segment one both are available in this table, but this function. Using this function also, I'm trying to get the P1 number, which is exact same, right? Yeah, exactly the same thing, but from a different path. 
from yes. the function you're calling it. This, uh, right, right. The first thing is from the direct query. Yes. Uh, so one thing, what's the difference between printing and giving uh, output? I don't That's know. what. If you're, see, this is here, you, you need to understand the query result area and the DBMS output. Now, if it is a DBMS okay. output, this is more this is more of your, you know, like a business logic output, which you want to validate your program. Okay. Now, when I written a fun, when I write, when, I, when I'm executing a function, it is returning the data in the query result area, right? Not in the DBMS output area. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. Why I'm telling this one? Because, see printing output in the console and returning value okay this what what i mean to say is when you're saying returning a value is your function returning a value means that when you're invoking it your select query can capture that result now my okay. select my select query is capturing the result of a function and i can see the value here i can see the value okay. which is written by my function but coming to my okay. processor Procedure first basic thing is procedure cannot be invoked in a select query and Procedure okay. whenever we execute a procedure you can print something in the output. You can just print something in the output Okay, I get it. yeah, you can print something in the output But but in the case with the function that can be captured in the select query and that you can in that you can return it That's what we call generally call it as see if you observe in other way both are same whether you're printing nothing but you're extracting, I can say rather than printing or whatever return value, I can say rather than all these things, mm -hmm. I can just say extracting a value, extracting value from database. So, uh, one question is that so if you run say procedure, I ran a procedure, yeah, uh, I got an out, yeah, procedure won't return, return any value, right. That's what I'm saying. Procedure will not return any value. Did you see keyword for did you see written keyword here? No, right? There is no written keyword in the no. procedure. Okay. There is no written keyword for the procedure. For the function, it is mandatory. For the function, it has to return a value. Okay. If a function doesn't return any value, it will not work. If you see here, compilation it will be successful. Let us say I will comment this pro comment this line and try to compile. Compilation it will work fine. And now if you try to execute, see what is the error it will give you. Can you see? Okay. A, a call to PL SQL function completed, but no return statement was executed. Okay. So a function always has to have a return value. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the procedure won't give out output in a query result, but it, it, it does give output in the DBMS output, right? It can yeah. print something, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Yes. Even function can also print. It's not that only procedure. Even function can also. Print. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Function yeah. can also print, but yeah. So I, uh, I want to show you one. The thing point. with procedure is that it cannot give output in the query result. Yes. Yes, that's correct because it cannot it cannot invoke the function in the select query. Now just see this one. Begin. Okay. End. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm invoking a function, right? This is my function. Okay. Enable the DBMS output first. Execute it. So what it is saying? It's saying some issue, right? Compilation issue or something. And usually, a PLC equal compilation a compilation error, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is not. A, it is not getting executed. Okay. The reason is, okay. you have to capture the return value. See here now. Now, if you write like this, just see the difference. Can I use cursors here? Are you executing any SQL query? When do you use cursor? When do you use cursor? Cursor. Mm -hmm. cursor. cursor. See, <laughs> we use cursor when you want to execute a SQL query. When you want to store the result of a SQL query in the PL SQL, then only you use a cursor. Okay. 
that's the purpose okay mm. for storing purposes storing the result of a sql query in the pl sql program yeah. then you will use a cursor now i just want to execute a function from inside anvis block so now okay fine yeah. so if i just execute now it will work fine now okay. am i printing the value in the dbms output Um, this is coming from the function, right? Yeah, that's what. One second. Yeah. Okay. So it's not printing actually. You can see, find it, right? No, DBMS. it's taking the. So whatever it in the DBS DBMS output, the value whatever it it's printing, right? Now we leave about all those things. Is it printing the value or not in the DBMS output? Yeah, it's printing. So the, is it printing anything in the query result? Are you seeing anything in the query result here? The query result. There is no query result. No, right? no, no. There's nothing. There's yeah. no query result. Yeah. So then, what is the difference between procedure and a function? Both are doing same logic now, right? Yeah. See again here. Yes. I'll call my procedure from here. I'm calling okay. function now. I'm calling procedure now. Okay. I'll write here to understand easily. Okay. Invoking function. Invoking okay. procedure. Okay. Clear this. Clear this. Now see. Right? The same thing. Same thing. Okay. The only extra thing yeah. for the function is you can invoke from the select query, and also while in, while when you invoke a function, always see the difference here. But procedure, I'm not assigning the value to any of the thing, right? Line number seven, I just yeah. called it directly. But for the function, because function always returns a value, and I have to capture it. Then only it will work. Else it will not work. Okay. Uh, um, one more thing, Sridhar. Uh, when you say it's not return. Any value you meant to say it's not giving any output. That's what you're trying to say. For which? Uh, for procedure. See, see the syntax here. For, see, if you see, I was telling you for the function you have to explicitly mention return return keyword. For procedure okay. you will not have any return keyword here. For procedure you will not have any return keyword. Yeah. See, it's like, so it's like even simple, the thing. Can... simple thing. It's like acknowledgement. You know, like uh, let us say, let us say, you know, like when you write an email, okay. and you, you want to, you want to, you like, you know, in some scenarios, what you do is like uh, you expect that, like uh, uh, receiving acknowledgement, right? Receiving acknowledgement. Yeah, receiving. Uh, yeah, receive. receiving acknowledgement. Receive. Whenever, whenever an email is delivered to some person, you expect that it has to respond back to you, saying that. That particular person has uh, what you say uh, downloaded it, or maybe that, that person has read it, he, read receipt or something. Read, read the mail. Yeah, yeah, read the yeah. mail stuff. Let us say in some scenarios mm -hmm. you don't want that functionality. In some scenarios you just want okay. to fire and forget. Just send it, leave it. Okay. Not ex not expecting not expecting any response. Now. Okay. In the function, you always you always get a value. In the function, always it responds back to your particular with a value. Okay. Always you have to return a value from the function. That is what I'm say, telling you. But in the case of process, okay. in the case of process, you'll not get any output. It will perform the business logic. That's it. Okay. Now in this case, what ex what exactly it is happening? You are sending an email to some particular person, but you're not expecting any output. You just want to fire and forget. Send it and leave it. Okay. So process. It won't return any output. That's what you're trying to say. That's what I'm saying. It will just perform. Okay, and one more. It'll, thing. it'll perform. It'll just perform the business logic what it is intended to do. So what is the next step of performing? So once it does the business business logic, so uh, if we cannot get the output, how will we know if it's? You are doing some action, right? What's the next step? In the business, you will perform some action. Automatically, that will lead to some other action, right? No, okay, fine. See, let us say you're sending sending an email to me. So mm -hmm. I received it. So it is my 
it is my responsibility to reply reply back to you or to per, to perform some action right so i'll be doing the next course of action yeah, once yeah. i receive some input so okay. in the set in the procedure scenario you will be executing some business logic if you when you perform some execution of business logic it means that internally something has to happen right okay in the real time when you write a process yeah. there should be some process there should be some purpose you write it isn't it yeah there's that should lead to some action right obvious that all depends upon what you write again uh, okay depends, so yeah okay mm. you get it yeah so function is used to give us some some kind of output basically yes why do we use function because most of the time calculation purpose let us say you have an employee number and you want to get a salary and that should be printed okay. in the output that should, that you want in the select query okay. i will write a function for that okay. or maybe i'll simply join the table okay. Mm -hmm. okay fine i understood maybe i should uh, read a bit about this functions and process yeah, i mean i understood the overall like, see, purpose take, of the function it will take some time it i'm see it will take some time so yeah. nothing in hurry in understanding it it will take some time yeah, yeah, I get it. yeah. I mean, is there any chance I can get those syntaxes so I can go through in, it? And... In the PPT, you have it. See, yeah, that's what. Don't try to read uh, big, big theory books. You'll not that time waste one. First of all. No, 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 not the uh, no, theory no, no. books. Just the syntax you wrote in the. No, that that is developed. that is there already. If you see the PPTs, you already have a syntax in that. You will have a syntax, and you'll have sample for each particular example. So, see the okay, syntax then, processor and a function. That is enough as of now. Okay. Yeah, later on if you yeah, later on you can check out other developer guides. But as of now it is not required. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean uh, I'll try to study it tomorrow. Yeah, sure. I'll try to go through all this. Yeah, so one more thing is like a like uh, you are talking about a client environment, right? So do you have the permission to create components because this will create an object now? If you use DDL command, yes, yes, I don't have I don't have that access. I guess I mean, we never done that. Yeah. My colleagues they say don't. Yeah, yeah. Such right, right, correct. This. So what you can do is like uh, I can provide the remote server access. Okay, you can just do the same things what I'm doing okay. now. Yeah. Okay, fine. Then. Yeah. If you can give me the details or something. So yeah, I'll provide that. I'll provide the details. You can just you can just try to practice. Yeah, sure. So will it be available in the night times? In yeah, it is because we'll be going to office, right? It is twenty-four by seven. It is twenty-four by seven. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Then okay. Okay. Mm. So like uh, as of now today, what we discussed is just a major difference between procedure and a function. But we will try to see some more samples in this area. Okay. Yeah, so, sure. We should. Because when you get a, more on this. when you get a requirement, so in the in the initial scenario we we don't know what to write where. The problem is, like now I anything can be achieved in procedure and function. I mean to say, like something which is achieved in procedure can also be achieved in the function also. But you know, like okay. we have to get the confidence that okay, this has to be written in the procedure only. This has to be written in the function only. That confidence we have to get it. Okay. Okay. So okay. that's again I was telling you right. In some scenarios, like this particular statement will be wrong. Performing DML operation should be done only in the procedure. This will become wrong also. This may not okay. be ideal. This may not be the correct always. Okay, some some set of statements will be false. Oh, that, ha that okay. happens. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, initially, it is fine as of sure. yeah. Yeah, it's like too much of information to do this. <laughs> Yeah, this is see like understanding this itself will take a lot of time. It's not that much easy. Understand? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I have at least one full day of time. Since it's a weekend, maybe I have a lot yeah. more time. Because even I got a clarity after three years of my technical stuff. It's not that much easy to get this particular understanding. Jeez, believe me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the basic stuff we can understand, but the way to apply and when to apply, that's the hard part, I guess. That's a yes, tough part. Yes. Yeah, which uh, when to take a procedure and when to take a function. Yes, right. Because That's both right. because both will perform same logic. Yeah, both does the same thing, but yeah, we'll see that. Problem. We'll see that. Yeah.
So okay. we cannot apply business logic in function, right? Mm -hmm. no. Again, you're same asking the same question. I, see, both can do the same thing, right? Both, but both. See, like there is no, like what I'm saying is, everything can be achieved by both. Nothing but, if something okay. can be done by processor, the same thing can be achieved by function also. Okay, fine. Yeah. But in real time, we we okay. prefer we prefer this only preference. That's it. It's not it's not mandatory. Just a preference. That's why I mentioned as I was telling you right this logic. It's on just a preference. Okay. It's not it's not, it's not okay. always true. It's just a preference. Okay. It's not always true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is, yeah. Think okay. Yeah. Go through this notes and like CPT. Yeah, sure. And if you can provide me that access. Yeah, yeah, I'll provide that. Sure. Maybe tomorrow. Or something. Yeah, yeah, sure. We know you're here. Yeah. Just try to work on some stuff. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so which company you're working for? Working for? The TCA thing, the browser thing. Mm -hmm. So where can I find all the information in the TCA? Uh, come again. Yeah, see, like in the OAF page, you are saying that like if you open a page, you want to find out the table name. Is that your question or? Yeah, yeah. where can I find the uh, table name for the browser page? Yeah, it's very yeah. simple. First of all, first of all, yeah, let me tell you. Okay, so take one example. So first thing is always, first of all, just see whether, can you see this particular link in your system or not about this page? Yeah. This is mandatory. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is mandatory for us. So this will be enabled only if you enable FNA diagnostic profile value for your user or whatever okay. page it is. This has to be enabled. And then mm -hmm. let us say, open any of the thing and you want to find out some information. So what I can do is let us say purchasing super user. Okay. And let us say I'll go to supplier supplier page okay okay Perfect. now let us say i'll just search supplier supplier now i just click on update now assume that you yeah let us let it open anywhere anywhere wherever you see about this page you can understand okay yeah so now let us say you want to find out in which table this information is getting stored yeah okay now the basic thing you have to understand here is if you observe this page is having multiple regions we call it as like you have this region you have this region you have to this region there are, there are okay. multiple regions are available here so mm -hmm. what we can do is just first of all click on about this page okay now here it shows page definition and here under this page definition it will show some some information like this okay. Click on expand all. Okay. And now, so our information was in the top level, right? Like uh, the information which you have seen was a top level. So can you see supplier yeah. name here? So it shows a yes, yes. object here. It shows a vivo object here. Simply click on this hyperlink. Okay. This is a query. Oh, we can find the query itself. Yep. Wow, wonderful. So the only thing you have to understand is like uh, because if your page is having multiple regions, which which particular mm -hmm. vivo you have to click on because if you observe. So here, yeah, if, you which observe, yeah, is, uh, here if you observe there are a lot number of. If you're observed there are a lot number of regions, right? So only thing is you have to understand which region you're working on and based on that that particular vivo you have to click on. Yeah, if you see here, it, if you see here, it is sites vivo. So that's where the difference is. It all depends upon which region, and based on that, that vivo you have to click on. That's all logic you have to find. Okay. And you can click, okay. go back to the same page. Don't try to click on back. Always only go with your navigation, which are provided within the page. Okay. Don't go browser. Uh, Don't click on browser back. No, yeah. What is different between view? They say view and different kinds of views. They say in the database. I don't get it. We discussed right. Data different types of database object. We have something called view and materialized view. There are two types of views. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference? No, it will. We'll discuss that sometime later.
Okay, okay, fine. fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, bye. Go to this one.